welcome to the series on oligopoly models and um this is number four of the series and in this um video i'm going to introduce you to the stackelberg model of oligopoly and i'm going to solve some examples of stackelberg quantitative analysis please i will urge all of us to kindly subscribe share and comment but most and more importantly kindly subscribe to this channel and let us have your feedback so that we can bring you more content now what we are going to discuss in this video is the model called stackelbeck so in the first video i explained to you that there is the Swizzy model there is the kuno model there is the Stackelberg model, and then there is the Bertrand model. And each of the models have their own particular characteristics. So let's look at the Stackelberg model. Now, one of the things I want us to know is that when it comes to the Stackelberg model of oligopoly, usually assuming that you are assuming a duopoly form of oligopoly, or assuming that there are two firms in the oligopoly market, usually one firm is the leader and one firm is the follower, all right? So this Stackelberg model, it, is, it describes advantages that a, a firm can get as a result of moving first into a, sec, a certain market. And then, um, so it basically talks about the first mover advantage of the firm that first enters the market, all right? So usually in a, in a scenario, one firm is the leader and the other is the, follower now what is very important in this model is that the decision made by the leader should be very very important and serious to the follower because the leader after he has set his output the follower can look on the leader's output and also set his so this means that always the follower observes the leader's output decisions and also make his decisions based on the leader's decision. Now, one of the things I want us to know is that Stackelberg model also, the control variable is the quantity. So basically in Swizzy, the control variable was the price. Who know the control variable was the quantity Stackelbeck as well, the control variable is the quantity, all right? Now, what are some of the first mover advantages that the firm that first enters the market have in terms of output? Now, one of the things I want us to know is that anytime the first firm is making output decisions, he has to take into consideration the reaction of the second firm all right so that he can make output decisions that will give him advantage so for instance if there are only two firms in a stackelberg oligopoly and let's say firm a is the leader all right for the for firm a to get more profit firm a can choose to produce 70 percent of the market output all right and because there are just only two firms, definitely firm B will produce lesser. The follower will now come and produce lesser because the leader has produced 70% of the market output. So based on that, the follower would have to produce 30%. He has to base his output decisions on that of the leader, all right? Now, if the follower decides to produce 40%, that means that the excess 10% will be waste. And then the producer, will, um, that second, firm would incur losses, all right? So the first firm always has the advantage of choosing a bigger output so that the second firm can produce what is left, all right? So usually the second firm bases his output decisions on the first firm, all right? That means that the first firm has advantages of certain output. Then the second firm will take the rest. Now, what are some of the characteristics of a Stackelberg oligopoly. Now here, there are few firms serving many customers. Of course, this is quite common to all um, oligopoly models. The firms produce differentiated or homogeneous products 
there are barriers to entry that exist. Then always there is a leader. So in the, in the question, where it is silent, we assume firm one to be the leader, but then the question can also specify which of the firms is the leader. Now, if you are a leader, that means that you must set your output first for all the other firms to follow. So usually one firm is the leader and the remaining firms are the followers, all right? One firm is the leader and then the remaining firms are the followers. Now, that means that the followers will definitely choose their output based on what the leader has already chosen, all right? So in summary, Stackelberg model illustrates how commitment can enhance profit in strategic environments. So because here, the leader commits to set output first, and then the follower or the followers also commit to set their output based on what the leader has done, all right? And usually, because the leader has first mover advantage, the leaders always chooses or the leaders are able to produce more output than in a Kono situation, all right? Than in a Kono situation. And also followers are able to produce less output than in a Kono situation, okay? So that is what we call the first mover advantage. Now let's look at the quantitative Stackelberg analysis. So given that P is equal to A minus B into bracket, Q1 plus Q2 bracket close, total cost one is equal to face cost one, C1, K1, this is equal to that, is equal to that. Now, because the cost functions are not quadratic and they are linear, we can assume this C1 to be the marginal cost as well as the average variable cost. We mentioned that in the Kuno video. So all the terms here, the explanation is the same as the Kono video. So the C1 here is the marginal cost or the average variable cost of M1. And then the C2 here is the marginal cost or the average variable cost for M2. FC1 is the fixed cost of M1. FC2 is the fixed cost of M2. Once you add the fixed cost and then the total variable cost, we have the total cost for M1. We also have the total cost for M2. Now here, because the leader chooses his output before the follower will now choose his, that means that the leader will not have a reaction function. It is only the follower that will react to the leader's output. The leader will set his output independent of the follower, but then the follower will then have to react to the leader's output, okay? So although the, the leader will, will set his output thinking about the follower, he will not set his output based on the output of the follower. He will just think about what the follower will do but he will not set his output based on that of the follower, right? But the follower will rather um, set his output based on that of the leader. So here in the formula, we have A plus C2. C2 is the marginal cost or the average variable cost of M2 minus 2C1. C1, as you all remember, is the marginal cost or the average variable cost of M1 over 2B minus 0.5 K2. And of course, FEM2 will react to FEM1. So the FEM2's reaction function is like that of the Kuno, all right? It's the same as that of the Kuno. Okay. Now, the profit functions are also the same. And then um, the price function, how to get the industry price, and then how to get the industry profit is also the same. So here, we have quantity one, we have the industry price, we have Average variable cost one and then face cost one. Then we have quantity two, that's the quantity of the follower, the industry price, the average variable cost two, and then the face cost two. And once we configure these formulas, we are going to get the profit for firm one and then the profit for firm two. And once we add the profit, we will get the total industry profit. Okay, so let's take an example here. This example says that. Suppose an inverse demand function for two firms in a homogeneous product Stackelberg oligopoly is given by P is equal to 50 minus into bracket K1 plus K2. 
And the cost functions for the two firms are C1 is equal to 2K1, C2 is equal to 2K2. So we can clearly see in this total cost function that there is no element of fixed cost, all right? There is no element of fixed cost. You can recognize from this function, these two functions that there is no element of fixed cost. Okay, so if you want to break down this into the formulas, our A is equal to 50, our B is an imaginary one, which is here, so our B is equal to one, our C, or this is supposed to be total cost one, okay? Total cost one, total cost two, okay? So our C1 in the formula is two, our, so here, and then our C2 in the formula is also two, all right? Now, FEM1 is the leader and FEM2 is the follower. Now the question says that what is FEM2's reaction function? What is FEM1's output? Um, what is FEM2's output? Out? What is the market price? What is the profit for each firm? And then the total industry profit. Okay, so here, We have P to be equal to um, 50 minus Q1 plus Q2 in brackets. So we have 50 minus Q1 plus Q2, okay? Then total cost one is equal to two Q1. Total cost two is equal to two Q2, all right? Okay, so here from this, we know our A is equal to 50, our B is equal to one, our average variable cost one is equal to two, our average variable cost two is also equal to two. So to find the output of the leader, we have Q1 is equal to A plus C2 minus two C1 all over two B. So we have 50 plus our C2 is two minus two, our C1 is also two all over two into bracket one, okay? So once you solve everything, you get Q1 to be equal to 24, all right? Now, because FEM2 will react to FEM1, we find the reaction function of FEM2, which is the same as the previous reaction functions we did in Kudo. So you have A minus C2, all over 2b minus 0 0.5 q1. So then we will have 50 minus 2 over 2 minus 0 0.5 q1. So that will lead us to um, 24 minus 0 0.5 q1, all right? But we know that the leader's output q1 is equal to 24. So q2 will be equal to 24 minus 0 0.5 into bracket 24. So we will have the final answer to be 12, all right? So Q1 will produce 12, um, 24 units and then Q2 will produce the remainder, which is, 30, uh, which is 12 units. So that means that the total industry output will be 36 units, okay? All right, now let's move on to find the uh, profits. So profit for the leader will be equal to Q1 into bracket P minus um, average variable cost one minus fixed cost one. Remember in this question, there was no fixed cost. So the first quantity was 24. Yes, we, we, we need to find the industry price first. So the industry price will be equal to um, 50 minus Q1 plus Q2. So we will have 50 minus into bracket 24 plus 12. That will give us 50 minus 36. So the answer will be 14, all right? So the profit for firm one will be equal to 14 into bracket. Sorry, sorry. The quantity for firm one was 24. So 24 into bracket, the industry price, 14, okay, minus 
having variable cost on h is what? Two, okay? Minus the fixed cost is zero. So you have 24 multiply by four. Then the final answer will be 288. Then profit for firm two will be Q2 into back P minus C2 minus fixed cost two, all right? And we all remember that in this question, there are no fixed cost. So profit two will be equal to um, quantity two, which was 12, into bracket the price 14 minus two, which is the average variable cost two minus zero. Okay, so you have 12 multiplied by 12. So the profit for firm two will be equal to 144. And then the total industry profit will be the profit for firm one plus the profit for firm two. So you have 288 plus 144. So 288 plus 144, you have 402, uh, 432 cities as the total industry profit. 432 as the total industry profit. Okay, so let's take our second example. Now, we solved this question already in the quantitative Kono analysis. So those of you who have not watched the video, kindly find the video, the third video of the series that talks about um, further examples on quantitative Kono analysis, all right? Now, here, we remember that in this question, we also remember that there is no element of face cost because the average cost is equal to the marginal cost. That means that there's no element of fixed cost in this question as well. And the question says that the two firms, all of them, so it says, assume another firm enters the market after the first firm and thus the total industry output is given as Q1 and Q2. Suppose the second firm has the same cost as the first and that the second chooses its output based on the output of the first, okay? This simply means that FEM1 is the leader and FEM2 is the follower because FEM2 chooses its output based on the output of FEM1, all right? Okay, so let's go and solve the question as well. So here, once you make price the subject, you have P is equal to 53 minus Q1 plus Q2, all right? So here we have the marginal cost or the average variable cost of the two firms to be C1 is equal to five. C2 is also equal to five, okay? Okay, now you are going to find the output of the leader. So Q1 is equal to A plus C2 minus two C1 all over two B, all right? So in the formula, the A is 53, the C2 is five minus two into bracket, the C1 is five, all over two into bracket one, that's um, the B is one, okay? So when you solve this, you are going to get 24 units, okay? And then FEM2 will react to the um, output of FEM1, so FEM2 will have a reaction function, which is A minus C2, over 2B minus 0.5 Q1. So you have Q2 to be equal to 53 minus five all over two into bracket one minus 0.5 Q1. So Q2 will be equal to 24 minus 0.5 Q1, okay? And this, since we know Q1 to be equal to 24, we will have Q2 to be equal to 24 minus 0 0.5 into bracket 24. So that will give us 12 units, okay? So that will give us 12 units. And then the industry price will be equal to 53 into bracket 24 plus 12, okay? 53 minus into bracket 24 plus so we have 53 minus 24 
minus 12, if you deduct the two of them from 53, you're going to get 17 CDs. So the price is 17 CDs. Remember, in this question, there was no element of fixed cost. Okay. So let's go and find their profit. So profit for firm one is Q1 into bracket P minus C1 minus FC1. All right. So the output for firm one was 24. The industry price is 17. And then um, the average variable cost for firm one was five. There is no fixed cost. Okay. So you now have 24 multiplied 17 minus 5 is 12. Okay, as the final answer is 24 by 12, we get the final answer that will be um, 268. 268. See this. Okay. And the profit for firm two K one into bracket P minus C two minus F C two. So then we will have twelve into bracket seventeen minus five minus zero. So this will give us twelve by twelve. All right. So if you multiply twelve by twelve, you are going to get one forty four CDs as the price. Sorry, as the profit for firm two. We want to look at the total industry profit. We will add the profit for firm one, the leader, plus the profit for firm two, the follower. So we are going to get 268 plus 144. So 268 plus 144, the total industry profit will be 412. 412. Let's take the last example. Okay, so this example says that suppose the market demand for two firms is given as Q1 plus Q2 is equal to 53 minus P. The cost incurred by the first firm by producing the last unit of output is 10. So that means that the marginal cost of the first firm is 10, while that of the second is 12. Suppose firm one is the leader and firm two is the follower as seen as Stackelberg oligopoly. What is firm two's reaction function? What is firm one's output? What is firm two's output? The market price and then the profit. If the first cost of the first firm is 40 and that of the second firm is 20. Okay. All right. So the inverse demand function is P is equal to 50 minus Q1 plus Q2. Let me just check. 53 minus Q1 plus Q2, which is in bracket. Okay. Then the question says that the marginal cost of the first firm is 10. The marginal cost of the second firm is 12. Okay. Now here, the followers reaction function definitely is A minus C2 over 2B minus 0 0.5 K1. So here we will have 53 minus 12 all over two into bracket one minus 0 0.5 K1. So this will give us, um, if you summarize, 53 minus 12 will be 41 divided by two is 20.5. So you have 20.5 minus 0 0.5 K1. So that is the followers reaction function. Now, the leader's output Q1 will be equal to A plus C2 minus 2C1 all over 2B, all right? So here, our A is 53, our C2 is 12 minus two into bracket, our C1 is 10 all over two times one, all right? So the numerator 53 plus 12 minus 20, the numerator will be 45, okay? The denominator will be two, so 45 divided by two. We are gonna get 22.5 units as the leader's output. 
Now, because the follower reacts to the leader, the follower's output will be determined using the reaction function. We have 20.5 minus 0 0.5. Now, K1 is 22.5, okay? So K1 is 22.5. So once we do all the mathematical calculations, the output of the follower will be 9.25 units, okay? So this is the output of the leader and this is the output of the follower. Now let's go and determine the profit. So profit for the leader will be equal to, but first of all, let's determine the industry price and we determine the profit, okay? So price is equal to 53 minus Q1 plus Q2. So we have 53 Q1, um, Q1 was 22.5, Q2 is 9.25, okay? So once you do this mathematical calculation, you are going to get 21.25 as the industry price. So now let's find the profit of M1. Profit of M1 will be equal to K1 into bracket the industry price minus average variable cost one minus face cost one, okay? Now in the question, the question was emphatic that the face cost of the first firm, the face cost of the first firm is 40 and that of the second firm is 20. So the face cost of the first firm is 40 and that of the second firm is 20, okay? So here, we are just going to put in the face cost values. So the quantity of M1 is 22.5. Industry price, 21.25. Average variable cost one is minus five, okay? Because average variable cost one is five, minus the face cost is 40, all right? So once you punch everything, you are going to get we are going to get 331.25 CBS. And if you want to find the profit of M2, we will have Q2 into bracket P minus C2 minus 20 because, or sorry, minus FC2, okay? So this will give us um, 9.25 into bracket, 21.25, okay? Okay, so it looks like I, I mixed up the question a little bit. I think the, the marginal cost, the marginal cost, I picked a wrong marginal cost. So we have to redo this calculation. Okay, so here, quantity one or the quantity of the leader was 22.5. The industry price is 21.25. The marginal cost of the leader was 10, okay? then the first cost was 40, all right? So let's recalculate this and get the answer. Okay, so once you do that, you are going to get a profit of 213.125. Then the profit for firm two is Q2 into like a price minus C2 minus face cost two, all right? So then we will have 9.25 into bracket the price is 21.25. The marginal cost two was 12, and then the face cost two was 20, all right? So once you punch everything, you are going to get, um, so you are going to get 65.5625, um, okay? All right, so, okay. And if you want to find the industry profit as usual, you are just going to add the two profits. You are going to add the profit for firm one and then firm two, and then we get the total industry profit. Okay, so this will bring us to the end of the um, video on Stackelberg analysis. Please like, comment, share, and most importantly, subscribe so that we can bring your way more content. So see you in the next video on Bertrand
pollution and contestable market. Okay, thank you.